What's good, everybody? This is Courtney, and we are back again for my show. Y'all should already know. Chasing Atlanta, Season 3, Episode 4. A shook of the table. <sighs> Child. Y'all gonna wear my, run my pressure. I fucking swear. Especially Kendra. Especially Kendra. Baby girl, I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting. Okay. Episode was good. We got the shade of plenty. And we got that drama. And all of that. So let's start this. Let's start this episode off. So we start this episode off with Jaylon. Jaylon and a friend of his, they're going to Nana Chicken Waffles. That listen, the waffles look kind of nice. And Jaylon is there to meet. Kendra. Now, as y'all remember, Jaylon was supposed to go with Oliver, and I think it was Jaylon and Troy were supposed to go with Oliver to go to Kendra's uh, release, video release party. You know, it's the uh, video release party that Oliver said that that video is like a couple of months old. We don't already seen that, that mess. And so, Jaylon and all his shady fucking glory uh, you know, he said, I saw the clip of the video that Oliver, you know, showed me and all that. And I was like, Lord, what the fuck? And all that stuff. But, you know, Jane Lund said, listen, I've been the only girl in this group for too long. He said, I need I need some more girls around me. He said, I'm tired of being around all these goddamn motherfucking butch, butch queens and all these men, all these niggas and stuff like that. So, for what I'm gathering, for what I'm seeing... I think Jaylon is going to pull Kendra under his wing and be what her mentor or, 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 or be that big sister. If you, if you want to say it like that, I'm guessing. So Kendra, Con, Kendra and you know, a, a shadow, her petite shadow. Wayne the pie. Listen, <laughs> Every time I say that nigga name, I'm going to do it like that. Listen. It was that when they did that clip of, of the party and it had, uh, you know, you know he, Wayne, Wayne introduced himself. Wayne. The party. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. No disrespect, Mr. Mr. Pine. I, I'm just cracking jokes. But they show up. And um, they goes to talking, and it's mainly this. Uh, Kendra and her confessionals, she was like, she's excited to meet Jaylon. You know, she also heard that Jaylon had something to do with it down, the whole shit with, like, with Oliver and stuff. And so she knows there are two sides to every story, and she wants to hear, you know, what Jaylon had to say. So... You know, they get there, they meet, they hug, you know, after they eat or whatever, they start to talking. And, um, Kendra's issue is this. If you had a problem, if you felt some kind of way, you should have came to me. She, I think she said they exchanged numbers. She said, you could have came to me. You didn't have to go and tell everybody what the fuck, what, what the fuck how you felt you know what i'm saying so basically she hearing that from everybody other than him because she said well you know when we exchanged numbers and that i thought we were cool now oliver you wrong that was shysty that was dirty why you didn't go why you didn't go go to that woman pull out to the side and stuff you know better. You know better than that. But you need a book. So, <laughs> so you know, Jaylon was like, listen, I ain't trying to be, you know, getting no mess and everything. You know, uh, I ain't trying to start no shit. Uh, you know, I'm not messy. You know, I ain't for the mess. And I was looking at looking at my uh laptop. I was like, nigga, since when you ain't been messy? Now, girl, Jaylon, 
You messy, baby. You shy. You shy. That's for you. are messy. But we love you, though. We love you for it, though. But come on, baby. Come on, sure. You know you is. You know you is. So, she was saying, like, she didn't know that you wanted to do a song with him or some mess. I don't know. Because when they were saying it, it was kind of low. You know, they had the little uh captions and all that shit. So, I'm not really understanding about that shit. So, excuse me, y'all. In true J-Line fashion, J-Line has to say something about Kendra's wig. I'm going to need y'all to get off Kendra her. I'm going to need y'all to get off of that. She doing good with what she got. And she doing good with what she working with. Jaylon, hook up with a wig. Well, it seems like y'all going y'all gonna to be sister friends. You hook baby girl up with a wig. One of your marvelous pieces. One, one of your marvelous units and shit, bitch. You do that for her. All right. So, it's still so going to be some issue. Now, here's the thing, like, well, uh, uh, you know, with Oliver and um, Kendra. You know, they're my two babies for this season. You know, I fucking love them. We all know Kendra is hood. And a hood bitch know a hood bitch. I'm a hood bitch. Listen, Mississippi do have hoods, y'all. They do have hoods. Kendra and Oliver, they both hip hop artists. Now, they both hip hop artists. They both trying to make it, but they in two different lines. But they on the same highway. Y'all get what I'm saying? Kendra, you like I said last time, she reminds me of Gangsta Boo. So, you could say Kendra rep- represent a uh, motherfucking Southern rap. Just think like, now, some of y'all might be too young, but to all my older heads or my ones that, you know, rap heads, whatever, just think about when Southern rap finally got its speed. During the era of motherfucking, uh, uh, like, Master P, No Limit, Cash Money in its early years and all that shit. And then, you know, here goes uh, uh, Lil John and, you know, Atlanta rap. Southern rap. Then we got a trick daddy and we got a trainer. But anyway, just think of that. Think of that Southern rap entity. And then you got Northern rap, you know, East Coast or West Coast and all that stuff. To me, Kendra represents Southern rap in that time frame. So let's let's be honest with ourselves. East Coast, like back then, they they never considered Southern rap being being a form of hip hop. They didn't and stuff like that for a long time till they saw the motherfuckers start making money. But we ain't gonna talk about that. Kendra represents that to me. Here comes Oliver. Oliver represents like uh east coast and all that stuff all of us a little bit more polished you get me kendra is raw and rough one ain't better than the other you know what i'm saying but they they represent two different styles yeah they represent two different styles now in kendra's eyes she look at all of us shit she might think, you know, that's cute and everything and all that stuff, but it don't seem real. Oliver could look at her stuff. You know, it was all right, but you know, it might be a little too uh a little too ghetto, a little too rough. But it's still hip hop. One ain't better than the other. You get me? So I'm thinking of it like that. And Kendra, her thing is this. This is her first time being on a platform like this with a cast of motherfuckers and all that stuff. And then she on a platform on a show that is watched by so fucking many. And so she got to deal with, like, different, um, you know, opinions. And then, you know, fuck the opinions of the people that are watching her. Here comes the opinions of her motherfucking cast mates and shit. You get me? So she's going to be on defensive. We don't know Kendra's history. 
We don't know how, you know, she probably had to fight all her fucking life and all that stuff. So that does something to a motherfucker. That keeps them on the ready. It keeps them on the defense. You get me? So, yeah, she going to feel some kind of way. Because like she said, you know, that I'm new to this. You know, hell, somebody come at me at the slight. She said, nine times out of ten, I'm going to go in the wrong direction. I'm going to act wrong. You know? So, to me, I feel like she's on the defense. Because she probably feel like these motherfuckers are judging her. Or, you know, they go to ghetto, girl. They go to ghetto, bitch. They go to hood, bitch, and all that stuff like that. You know? So, hell, maybe with motherfucking Jaylon. You know, she could learn to not be on the defense as much. I think if she don't, I think if she just tone it down some and her all of a talk, no drinking, sober, and they just talk with no middleman. Now, Wayne, the pain, I'm going to need you to step out, and I just want these two to talk, but I don't know. She got attitude. Oliver got it too. I don't know, but you know, we'll see. So we get to the next. We get to the next. We get to the next, and here's my baby, my juicy baby, Montel. Hey, Montel, how you doing? You know, I don't. I you probably ain't I ain't watching this and all that stuff, but I love you. I love your brand. Uh, slide a bitch a motherfucking fashion killer t-shirt size three X. Okay. But, uh, he's doing this, <laughs> he's doing this event for, uh, Red Day, Red Paint Day. It's like an event for HIV and AIDS awareness. And he's doing a fashion show. And Cameron is there to help him, you know, dress the girls, get the girls ready, get the models ready. And so he invites you know, Oliver, we were born there, and I'm thinking Q is there too. So, they getting ready to do what they do. Listen here, uh, Montel. I love your whole fashion aesthetic. I do. I love that shit. And that model of yours with the bald head, where you get him from? That's the most gorgeous goddamn piece of mama fucking chocolate, bitch. Hmm. Mama loves a chocolate motherfucker. I show the fuck too. He is gorgeous. And uh did you said that was your brother in the last season. And you just saying like brother brother or or brother brother. I'm just saying, how old is it? Do he like older women? Let me stop. Let me stop. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So they go do that. And you know, you seeing all of, uh you seeing my see Montel is in his environment. He happy. You know, you can tell when a motherfucker love that goddamn craft and shit. You get me? And everything. He just doing it what it do and everything. The fashions are pretty. They nice. Now, one of them had me looking crazy. It was the one with the uh skirt, you know, the platform thing with the net over it and look Maybe it had me looking crazy because sister girl looked like she was trying to hold it and walk and looked like she was trying to slip something. I hope she didn't fall and bust her ass, but you know, that. But it was a success. And you know, you talked and all. I forgot you was a nurse. Yeah, you, uh, that came out you being a nurse in last season. You a nurse full time job. And I know them hours long. I got family and all that shit is nice. I know that I don't mind was alone. You know, it, it inspired, you know, it makes me happy, proud. It inspired me like, it inspired me to see y'all motherfuckers, y'all got full-time jobs. You could say they regular jobs. And you still make sure that, yeah, I got this regular job to pay the bills, but my life's blood, my true joy is in this and i'm gonna make it big one day i love that shit because you know it was like last season they were mainly talking about i'm a boss 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 and there's brands and boss and brands and boss 
you know, they were like, you know, I think it was like Gardena or whatever, trying to uh, chunk, slick shit about, you know, how can you be a boss when you uh got to get up nine to five and do this and you got to wait on that check and yada, 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 yada. Which I know it was shade and all that stuff. You know, he was throwing shade and everything. But, you know, for you to do that and you already know what your true passion is and you're going to work toward, regardless, I love that. I love that. And this ain't me knocking, trying to throw, you know, knock motherfuckers who basically live off their life's worth, their craft and all that shit. You know, like where to be music, fashion, art, and all that stuff. Hell, you put the time in, you spilled that blood for it and everything. That's wonderful. You know, I was just, you know, singing praises. So, I got the episode playing in the background, y'all. So, y'all gonna have to excuse me. So, Cameron is talking to Montel. And um, he's telling Montel, you know, he's gonna do a brunch. And he want all the girls and all the boys to be there. And he brings up Jaylon. And Montel like, why, why, oh, why every time I see you want to bring up Jaylon? That's basically what it is. You know, Cameron, he's all about unity. You know, he would like to see all, you know, everybody together on one accord and all that shit. But we all know Cameron, he's shady too. And he, he a little bit of a bone carrier too. But, you know, Montel ain't seen it for Jalen. We all know what happened last season. But, you know, Montel says that he'll show up. You know, he'll come regardless and all this stuff. Whatever. Because as you see with Montel, whereas with last season, you know, this season, well, this is like the fourth episode. We ain't seen that much of Montel. You know? How we get to see more of him, you know, later on. So, we cut to my boy, Mr. Sunshine, Oliver, Mr. Oliver Twix. He is getting his, he's getting his work done, because he's getting ready to uh, film for this project that he's doing with uh, Funky Dineva, another motherfucker that I love, uh, and while he's there doing whatever, a call come in. He gon' Twix, Oliver, Mr. Sunshine, you gon' um you finna do board games now? And it's a board game from back in the day, like was it 59, 1959, 1969, something like that. And the people that's over the game, they wanna give full reign to Oliver, let him do what he feel. So they basically rebranding and all that stuff, that board game. And the game is geared to an eight and twelve year olds. And, you know, basically, you impress the parents, you get the money. So, he going to be working on that project. That's nice. That is nice. That is nice. So, while he's doing that, listen, your puppy is so fucking cute. That little that little thing is so freaking cute. And you can tell he loves his papa. So, he gets a phone call from Montel. And Montel is like, Girl, bitch, what happened at that goddamn party? You know, like, what's going on? What happened? So, it's all about the whole Kendra thing, and, you know, him and Kendra, and, you know, the whole miscommunication thing. And, you know, all of us talking about, you know, homegirl, you know, Kendra ain't doing nothing. She pulling stunts, doing shows, and y'all, y'all this, and y'all, y'all that. I honestly feel this whole situation is a it's like a result of some bad mis miscommunication or whatever. But so they talk for a quick bit, and they uh he's going to uh, do an opening for the Queen Supreme Court. Mother T.S. Madison. I love that bitch. As y'all can tell, I love everybody. So, <laughs> I love everybody, I guess. So, that scene, you know, cuts. And we get to We Were Born. Listen, We Were Born. 
that y'all that video is everything oh my god y'all look so good and the song is everything y'all both beautiful so that that whole listen i love the lights bunny bunny ears and shit like that so they getting ready to do this do the uh video but as we all know most niggas operate on cpt color people time and you know everybody like the director like the choreographer like lyric uh well like the light people like too i said so everybody the i don't think he said anything about the dancers what well, the dancers like too but everybody like and baby girl berlin she she forgot one of her outfits her costumes so camera shows up with with some pieces and all that stuff which is good now you know camera shows up he said you know regardless you know they invite me to their video shoot. I'm happy back in to bring them some pieces. You know, I'm glad all is good, even though I didn't play their music at my party. Cameron, you didn't play, you didn't play that song at their party. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that. But you know, regardless of whatever, I'm glad you still came up with pieces for them and everything so they could look their best. So it's all good. So, you know, Cameron invites them to the, his brunch. And, you know, he put emphasis on uh, everybody coming. And they're like, everybody? He said, they, he said, everybody. So, we were born was like, uh, listen, we don't know if you can handle a function properly because that last one you had... Mm -mm. Mm -mm. but they said they're gonna show up they're gonna come so we will see how that go lord jesus so we come back to mr sunshine mr oliver and uh he's at the studio um and he's uh you know recording that shit sound good baby boy that sound good He's doing it off the beat of Carter B's beat for money. And so, listen, it sounds good. It sounds good, baby. And so, here comes Troy. Now, Troy, when I first uh, saw you, I, I thought you were kind of boring until I saw you again. I like, I actually like you. Now, when are we going to get some more scenes with you? Because literally, we only had got three. The one with Q. And Montel, the one, the other one with uh, the uh, safari thing, and now this one, we need more scenes with you. So, now, Troy was supposed to come with Jalen, and they supposed to accompany Oliver to uh, Kendra's video release party, but as we know, they were like, no show, but you know. Troy says, like, the reason why he didn't show up, he had to go see his mama because mama was stressed so much and, like, did she almost have a stroke or something? I hope your mama doing fine. I hope she's doing well. You know, you only got one mama, and that's right, baby. You ran to her to check on her. That's what you're supposed to do. So they talk more about the whole Kendra thing. Child. So... You know, all of us like it wasn't a lot, a whole lot of people there, and you know the whole production was, uh, you know it was it wasn't up to his stand, it wasn't his cup of tea and all that stuff. So there's that, and so they move past that, and um, Troy is telling him like, listen, I'm working on 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 some new money, bro. He finna take some classes about credit. And Oliver was like, credit? Nigga, you do clothes. You first start doing credit there? And Troy said this. I had to think about it. I said, you know what, brother? You're right. Troy was like, uh, to be an entrepreneur, be a millionaire, you got to have seven 
flows of income. And you know, he's like, I already got three. This one to make four. I said, boy, you better do it. Because he said, hell, my auntie runs a daycare. And she also rent out houses. Listen, y'all, that's money in real estate. It's money in real estate. So, so you know, there's that. So he talking about like he's gonna show up at the uh, he's gonna show up at the uh brunch. But you know, he's like, listen, it's all cool unless Kendra, you know, show ass and they they keep running on her about her her. But the wigs, I'm gonna need y'all to get off, get off of her, get off my baby's hair. And so <laughs> we get to the brunch. That's a nice restaurant. Now listen, I know good goddamn well y'all ain't coming to that uh that staff meeting. Showed y'all asses, but yeah, it happened. So everybody show up to the establishment. And, um, you know, Jalen ain't there, but we all know Jalen loves to be fashionably light. So fashionably light that most of the times he doesn't show up. And so they all together, all of them there, except for Kendra. And, you know, they, they have, you know, they look like they enjoying themselves. You know what I'm saying? So they talking, kiki, doing all that, having fun. And then the mood change. Why the mood change? Cause Kendra showed up. And Kendra was already with the fuck shit. Let's just go on and say it. So, you know, she comes in. They saying she already got attitude. We all know why. Because of Oliver. And she just ain't seen it for that nigga. So. Kendra shows up. You know, she got her shadow. You know, her manager. Mr. Payne. The Payne. He shows up. And so. She sits down. And, you know, Oliver's like, so, what's your problem? What's up? And I'm like, God damn, Oliver, you, you talked to her like Nicki Minaj uh, had, had uh, tried to check uh, Miley Cyrus. Like, what's good? What's good, bitch? Like that. And so, Kendra's like in her damn confessional. Uh, first of all, you a snake. Uh, I don't like you. Uh, why the fuck you talking to me? And so next thing you know, get back to the scene. Attitude on 10. Voices are raising. And all the white folks are looking like, look at these niggas. Look at them. They always got to make a scene. Like, y'all don't make scenes. I done seen the videos. Y'all make scenes, too, now. Y'all y'all show y'all asses, too. But, you know, they talking. Listen, Kendra already said she don't see it for Oliver. You the enemy, bitch. And she just over it. Like I said before, voices are raised. And then Kendra gets up. You know, Wayne the Pain. He was there, try to calm her down. But next thing you know, uh, Wayne the Pain is sitting at a table with the uh with a bunch of white people just talking, kicking and shit. And I I ain't gonna lie, when I saw that, I started hollering. I was laughing my ass off. I said, look at Wayne. So you know, all of us, you know, like I'm trying to ask you like what's going on and yada yada this. And y'all got that. And the thing with Kendra is like this. See, I I was waiting to tell you about this or whatever, discuss this, but I'm waiting for Jaylon to show up before you know we go on and say what's what. And you know, Oliver, listen, I'm gonna have to get on you, motherfucker. Now when Kendra walked in. And her Skittles outfit, the cute little bright Skittle pant jumpsuit she had on. 
You said something about that blue hair. I feel some kind of way being that I rock blue blue dreads. You know, I, I got blue dreads, bro. What's wrong with the color blue, bro? Mm. So, but here's the thing with Kendra. Kendra said, listen, basically, fuck you. I done already heard. People done already told me about your curl to how you act. And so while she doing the hand thing, pointing at them, we were born like, hold up, wait a minute. What you pointing at us for? Chill down. And kids are like, this don't concern you. Shut the fuck up. And I'm like, oh, God. I'm like, oh, God. And so Wayne grabs her, and they go to the ladies' bathroom. And here comes uh, We Were Born. And we were born like, uh, what the fuck is going on? Now, Oliver, not Oliver, my bad. Wayne the Pain, you know, like he touches, uh, Trevon. You know, he touch, uh, you know, Trevon. And also, homeboy is going at, uh, Wayne talking about, you just pulling stunts because your motherfucking ass want camera time. You want camera time and all that stuff. And they going back and forth. Uh, uh, Trevon, Trevon. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. I don't think I am. And Wayne, and you know, Trevon, but I say you and no motherfucking funky uh, contacts, bitch. And so they're going back. Cameron is trying to be the barrier, trying to break them up. Cameron, you so tiny. Baby, you, uh, get somebody to back you up when you try to separate these motherfuckers. So, next thing you know, that's the end of the episode, y'all. <sighs> Child. This is my thing. Like I said before, I just think y'all, you, you know, Kendra and Oliver need to talk. Sit back and talk uh, with no wine. Just y'all. And be sober. No drinking. Just drink water. And all. And maybe y'all could, like, do something with this miscommunication or some shit. You know what I'm saying? But... We gonna see y'all. We gonna see. That's it, y'all. That's the end for my favorite show, Chasing Atlanta. So you know, like, share, subscribe, leave your comments down below, and everything. And um, we'll be back at this next week, y'all. Show the fuck. You know, hey, Mister Sunshine, hey. So you need a whooping. You really do need a whooping. But I'm going to holler at y'all. Bye.